Aha, so Tziki is here. <laughs> he says, hi dear Maren, I hope you're well. 26 male Sweden. I constantly dream about my ex from two years back. Those days become so hard because of it. As I am unable to function, can I change my dream somehow? No. Why do you want to change your dream? Dream is part of what happens when we sleep. And that's mostly because you're thinking about it all day long. You want to change your dream? Stop thinking about it during the daytime. Because all you're doing, you're just giving something for the brain to think about. And you're suggesting to it, okay, this is what I want you to think about when I'm not thinking about anything. I want you to give priority of this. You know how it is like um, like YouTube system. The more you watch of a certain kind of a program or videos, certain topic, all in the same kind of a family group of the topic, so the more the system will suggest to you that kind of a video. Have you not noticed? If you watch lots of psychology or lots of math or lots of chemistry or lots of breakup stuff uh, or scientific stuff, depending on what it is that you watch the most, it calculates what you've been doing. So it suggests to you something of the nature of what you've been watching. Brain is also has that system. <laughs> Unfortunately. So when you keep thinking about uh, I don't know, uh, oranges, 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 oranges all day long. <laughs> so when you sleep, it says, okay, if I'm not thinking, if he's not busy thinking, doing anything, is not using the brain for anything. So, but my business is a thinking machine, a thought manufacturing plant. That's what I do. That's all I know what to do. The brain says, so it says, okay, based on what he's been or she's been using me all day long, engaging into the kind of a thinking about his girlfriend all the time. So obviously he's interested for me to bring that subject on. Now the brain doesn't care if you're interested in that what you've been thinking all day long or not. Because the people who have OCD or HOCD or anything like that, they're not interested in the OCD, they're not interested in the HOCD thoughts or lifestyle or uh, sexual inclination. But that is what they are debating and trying to for themselves thinking that they need to resolve so that their their brain that made their brain busy with that kind of a thinking so the brain doesn't care if you are interested in what you're using the brain the kind of thoughts that you're engaging the brain with all it's trying to keep data is what kind of a thinking what kind of a stuff you've been using the brain to figure out to calculate to data hunt to argue to debate so when you're not busy using the brain for any kind of a module any kind of a program any kind of a calculation any kind of a pondering it says okay it's not using me but my job is to keep thinking doesn't matter 24 7 i gotta be thinking i'm like a heartbeat i gotta be doing things so what do i do in order to engage him to talk to me or to make me feel I'm alive, to give attention to me, to, you know, consider what I'm doing, make me feel important, thought things, all that shit. And then says, oh, all day long he's been thinking about this shit. So I'm going to make him dream about that. Or I'm going to constantly be thinking about that even if he's not sleeping because that seems to be what he wants to do. And he doesn't know you're not interested in that. You're just trying to deal with something. Therefore, that is why it's so important if you're dealing with OCD or HOCD or any kind of a substance of OCD or any kind of intrusive thoughts whatsoever, do not pay attention to the ideas and suggestions and thoughts that pops up in your head about that subject. Just notice what, what it is, but focus on what it is that you're supposed to be dealing with during the day, your daily life, normal daily life. Whatever it is, being with your girlfriend, having sex, or having sports, or doing your math, or whatever it is, your job, keep doing that. Notice the intrusive thought, but don't engage in debating, or proving, or doubting, or doing anything about it to prove that, oh, you're not, you, I'm not interested in you, you're bullshit here. You, you should know it's bullshit. You don't need to prove it to any entity, including the thoughts that have popped up. Do not take the pop, the popping thoughts as some entity that has an existence that is serious for you to prove to it anything. It's got no substance, it's got no existence, it's got no life. But by you engaging and debating with it, you're actually
actually giving it a kind of atten attention that makes it look like it's alive, so to speak. If it was a movie, that's how it would look like. So ignore it, notice it, recognize that it's intrusive thoughts. Say, oh, okay. <laughs> you keep focusing on what you're doing, but you've noticed it. You've taken notice of it that is there, but you purposely then dissed it and not engaged in debating with it. You didn't pay attention to it. So the body behavior, your, your behavior towards that thought, the reaction towards that thought will make the thought realize that you're not interested because obviously the caudal nucleus, part of the brain that is supposed to automatically shut down intrusive thoughts when they show up, when you're not in the glitch of OCD or HOCD or whatnot, that's what it does, automatically shuts down because it knows what you're not interested in. But at that time, it's not working well, so there's a malfunction in the signaling system to get the signal that, hey, I'm not interested in this sort of thinking, these sort of thoughts, and get that back to uh, frontal cortex and done with the, the um, series of thoughts that has shown up, popped up. Because that signaling system has malfunctioned and it's not getting that, doing its job right, your behavior, your reaction towards these thoughts, these pop-up thoughts, intrusive thoughts, will rewire your brain to understand that I'm not interested in these thoughts. Even though you're not getting the automatic signals that's supposed to come to you because it knows about my values and what I am and so on, my gender, my interests and all that, automatically supposed to inform you that I'm not interested to, so you'll do your job and shut it down. But because you're not working, your electronic system and you're malfunctioning, I'm going to show you by my behavior of not engaging you in debates or discussion or proving to you anything about the thought that has shown up. I'm going to show you that my interest is zero there and you will learn through my behavior that I'm not interested and eventually you will rewire yourself to what I prefer it to be, to what I want you to not to think or not to pay attention or not bring a pop up in my head and that's called neuroplasticity which is that's what we do all day long. You know, look, you condition your brain for certain things. You play piano a lot, you become really good at playing piano. You stop practicing it, you practice guitar. The synaptic neurons that have been programmed to become good have created bridges between synaptic neurons to become good at passing that information of becoming a good pianist. They'll stop working for becoming a better pianist because you're not using them and they will switch around. They'll be marked by CQ1 protein. They'll be destroyed because they're not being used after a while you're not using it and they'll be ready to be used for something else you want to learn. So as we have the possibility and capability of learning things through by doing it synaptic neurons creating bridges and making possible for us to become good at that thing that we are doing it all day long sports piano math whatever it is when we are not using it they're marked by CQ1 protein glial cells when we sleep brain shrinks 60% they go and find what has been marked and then microglial cells destroy them because they say hey, we want to be able to learn new things and you guys are not helping anything new to be learned you've been taking space you've been programmed to learn piano but he's not playing piano anymore so I'm gonna sever your connection you two synaptic neurons and I'm gonna prepare you for what he wants to learn now which is guitar or playing soccer so this process happens if you keep doing something you become good at it condition yourself to be good at it and if you don't do it you have an ability to unlearn so we have an ability capable to learn things and we have an ability capable to unlearn things and then learn some new things so intrusive thoughts show up if you keep discussing things with it and trying to go into the rabbit holes and go what it is what it means why is it there what does it mean uh, does it mean my gender is going to change does it mean that i'm a pedophile does it mean that i'm going to harm myself does it mean i'm going to all that shit that is just all irrelevant doesn't matter what the topic is all bullshit but that's what the brain the malfunction of the brain is consist of when that happens if you simply keep entertaining it then you become good at entertaining this so constantly when it pops up you try to go and you know follow its lead and play that game that the thought wants to play to look like that it's important but when you don't allow this kind of engagement take place you disregard it it's like you have no interest like you pass by the tennis court you don't you're not interested to learn tennis you pass by but you go into the court start playing you become you improve you become maybe better in playing tennis so if you ignore these sort of thoughts by recognizing they're there and knowing that you're not interested and move on to do whatever it is that you're doing it's like you just pass by whatever it was going on because you were not interested then 
you will unlearn this ability of paying attention to these intrusive thoughts and eventually they will disappear because they will learn that even the signaling system is not working well but your behavior and your lack of attention towards these pop-up intrusive thoughts shows them teaches them conditions the brain that you're not interested you should not be showing up so much and that is the neuroplasticity that's the power that you have to use that and free yourself from all these nonsense you think you have to deal with you don't have to deal with any of them none of them so i don't know where i was going with that but i'm here <laughs> if you didn't ask for it you got it anyhow so use these powers and free yourself from mine always understand there is a separation between you the me and a thought you're not the thought thoughts are not you you're not the brain brain is not you so when you understand this hallelujah look consider yourself a locomotive train it's got the engine, it's got the direction, it's at the head of the old thing, and it's leading the way. Now, that locomotive's got hundreds of other compartments hanging on its tail and is being pulled by its power. Now, it's just pulling the compartments, but it doesn't know who got on it. Different stations stay, it stops, people bought tickets, they want to travel from one place to another. Some compartments are lions some compartments are dinosaurs some compartments are crocodile some compartments are worms some compartments are whatever whoever some part compartments are from japan some from china some from iran some from russia some from france germany wherever and they're different kind of people some are women and children some are men and children some are women and men some are men's different kind of people and different kind of genders some are heterosexual, some are homosexual, some are trans. Whatever they are, they've gotten on this train. But the locomotive did not choose any of them. Locomotive is only wants to get itself from point A to point B, but happens to have the capacity of all kinds of other things can travel with it. But it's got nothing to do with them. So just because there's one compartment has lions in, that doesn't mean, that doesn't make the locomotive lion. It's carrying lions. If one compartment are Japanese, that doesn't mean the locomotive is Japanese. It just happens to be that kind of a passenger. If one compartment is heterosexuals, homosexuals, transgender, whatever that compartment is, that doesn't represent what that locomotive is. Locomotive knows what it is. If the locomotive driver is a heterosexual, then doesn't matter what kind of people or lifestyle or species are in or genders are in the compartments that are being pulled by the locomotive. That doesn't mean they represent the interests of the locomotive driver. It's just doing its job. But there are lots of people that can be on those compartments of the train. The same thing when intrusive thoughts come in. Look, you got a brain and you know who you are. Whatever your gender is. We're talking about heterosexual and HOCD right this moment. So in that case, you're a heterosexual. You have a brain. And the brain's job is to make thoughts. Like the locomotive that has lots of compartments. It's got different things in each compartment. The brain has the capability of making all kinds of the, whatever the thought is possible. You happen to have some kind of a information through the media or have been, you know, living in this world. So you, know, so you know what's going on. Thought knows about it. Brain knows about it and can make thoughts. That's what its job. So it makes thoughts like the locomotive having lots of compartments in each compartments could be anything but it's got nothing to do with the locomotive driver so it's got nothing to do with who you are if intrusive thoughts of homosexuality shows up that doesn't mean you're homosexual that doesn't mean you should prove that you're not look all years long this pepper has been used by you to put on your food and you know it's pepper you've used it you've tasted it you know it's pepper one day your brain doubts it because brain is a doubting, you know, is a doubting entity. It doubts everything. That's what it is. OCD is doubting disease and brain of everybody doubts. We doubt in order to keep secure and safe. That's one of the things that the brain does is equip program to doubt. So it doubts everything. So one day and sometimes goes haywires, doubts about who you are, your sexuality, your job, your if you like this or that. See, one day this pepper that you've been using for years on your food, on your eggs, on whatever it is that you like and you know how it tastes, one day you question, is it pepper or not pepper? Now you're going to go try to prove, oh, it's pepper because it's black or because it's this, because it's not salt because salt is white. 
But the question is not if it's a pepper or not pepper. The question is that you're doubting the fact that this is pepper. The question is not that it has changed from being pepper all these years and you've used it and you know it and you've tasted it and you know it's been pepper. It's always been here. It is pepper. That's how it looks like. The question is not to prove that it is pepper still or not. The question is you're doubting not that this is pepper or not. You're doubting the pepper. It is still pepper. The change here is not in the pepper. The change is in your brain doubting what this has always been. Same thing with intrusive thoughts. The question is not that you're gay or you're not gay suddenly. The question is that you're doubting your heterosexuality, that you've been there always, you've been born with it, you will die with it. The question is not that you're going to change or anything. You never change. This is not how it works. Your gender will never change. If you've been born homosexual, you're homosexual. Enjoy it. Enjoy your life. If you're born heterosexual, you're heterosexual. Enjoy your life. You're not going to change because your thought starts doubting something. If that was the case, well, I would start doubting lots of things that's gone wrong in my life. Or maybe I'd start thinking about that I've got so much money in the bank. It should happen because my thought makes things happen. No, same thing here. You start doubting yourself. You start doubting the pepper. It doesn't change the pepper. It doesn't change you. The question is that you're doubting, not that the pepper is no longer pepper. You got to now prove that it is pepper. The question is that you're doubting your sexuality, your heterosexuality, not that you've changed from heterosexual to something else or it's possible for you to change. That's not the question. You've always been that. You've always been there. The question is you're doubting. And doubting is something that the brain does. We have doubting disease, all of us. Brain has the capability and its mandate is to doubt everything in order to protect you. That's what it does. So on that note, you should be aware of this, that the locomotive doesn't change regardless of what is carrying. The pepper doesn't change just because you're doubting it. Your heterosexuality doesn't change because suddenly you've got things pop up in your head and you're thinking, oh, that means something. It means nothing because thoughts are not you. You're not thoughts. You're not the brain. Brain is not you. On that note, go by your life. Live your life. Enjoy your life and don't be so weak-minded to be moved around by a thought popping up. Thought has no actuality. It's not existence. It has no existence. So treat it like that. All right, we go on with um, 